Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. I decided we could try something new this week and have class for 50 minutes. It's a crazy idea, um, but maybe we'll do it. If it works well, we could try it again uh, next week. Oh, but come not, on, Steve. Don't get carried away. Yeah, but it's okay. We'll, we'll also take Monday off just so that we can build up some steam. So let's dive into our material. Uh, when last we were together, we were talking about Green's theorem, and we're talking about the circulation form of Green's theorem. And I'd like to begin with a correction. So as you may recall, when we had our Winnie the Pooh sticker, we interpreted, uh, we interpreted the circulation form of Green's theorem, which says that the work or the circulation to go around the closed curve C, which is the tangential component of the force around the boundary, is equal to the double integral of the curl. And so the, the, the mistake correction that I need to clarify is that I believe yesterday in response to a question I explained, um, uh, yesterday in response to a question, I explained what was going on in the inside, I explained this quantity and I described it as flux. That was incorrect. It should have been curl, not flux. And so you might say, uh, well, Dusty, what the heck is curl? And so curl measures the rotation of the field at a point. And so what Green's theorem is telling us is that the circulation, if we look at the tangential component as you go along the outside boundary, that would be equal to looking at the sum of all those little rotations all the way across the inside region. Questions about that? I'm confused. <laughs> all right, let me, let me say it again from, from the beginning. So what Green's theorem does is it looks at the work. Well, I, I understand that. It's more the curl part. Yeah, so the, it talks about the circulation, which is basically going around the, the outside of this region, and it's always looking at the tangential parts. So okay. it's saying how much of this field is going, is going in this direction, okay? And so that's the circulation part. The curl part, what a curl is doing is it's a measure of how much curl, or maybe you could think like swirl, rotation, there is within the field. And so we could go and we could figure out how much is the field rotating at all of the points inside this yellow region and if we figured out how much it was rotating at all of those points inside the, re the yellow region, which is what this double integral gives us, the sum of that total curl would be the same as figuring out just the circulation uh, around the outside boundary. Is it like a torque from the center of the field at it's, each point? It's more like a, it's like a, it's not a torque, it's it's like how much is, is i mean think about water uh, in a river so it's talking about like an eddy or how much um like if your river is flowing straight along then there's no rotation right it's it's straight there's no curl But if we had a second river or maybe later elsewhere on the river, we were going and maybe there's like a rock in the middle of the river. And so the current is going around the, around the rock. You could imagine that there's going to be some sort of a, a rotating component to, it's probably like this actually. Uh, a rotating component at at least at some points on the river. 
And so the, the amount of that swirl, the amount is, 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 is measured by a quantity that we call curl. And we're actually going to talk at length on this idea of curl in the next section. Okay, I'll, let's, I'll keep this from getting all backed up and to the actual explanation. Cool, cool. Yeah, but this is the 2D version, which is frankly a little bit easier to visualize than the 3D version. So just hang, hang with me. Other questions? So there was some curl here. What does the curl will like help us find? Well, in this case, we're getting the choice. In this case, the curl is giving us a tool for calculating the work or circulation around a closed path. So we have the choice of calculating this, uh, we have a choice of calculating this work circulation directly, which is gonna require parameterization, or we can take advantage of this new concept curl and calculate that same work, but now without any parameterization needed, but just evaluating a double uh, integral. Okay. So that's, that's why it's advantageous to us. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. So yesterday we were talking about the circulation form of Green's theorem. Today, we're going to talk about the flux form of Green's theorem. So recall that the outward flux of F across the closed curve C is the line integral of F dot N dS. And so here, uh, how do I change my thickness? Um, here, this N is talking about now the normal component of the force field. And so the flux is no, isn't talking about the amount that's going along the curve. The flux is talking about the amount that's of the force that's normal to the curve. And when we talked about this back in 17.2, a couple sections ago, we came up with this formula here, right at the very end uh, of the lesson uh, for flux. And so notice here you have F dy minus G dx. So we can apply this to Green's theorem and get a, a new version of Green's theorem. So this is the flux form. So let C be a simple, closed, piecewise smooth curve. Remember, sorry. Anybody remember how I adjust the thickness of my line? Ah, got it. Um, remember these cur these statements here: simple, closed, piecewise smooth curves. These are just these are our conditions. Just basically saying we have to have a nice curve. We have to have nice regions. And so there was a short little video on that, but it's not something to lose sleep over. So let's see be a simple closed piecewise smooth curve oriented counterclockwise that encloses a connected and simple connected region R, simply connected region R. So here's those other conditions. So assume that F equals little f comma little g, where F and g have continuous first partials, then is your flux formula. Your flux is equal to this bit over here, um, the double integral of the partial of f with respect to x plus the partial of g with respect to y, uh, where n is the outward unit normal vector on the curve. So in this case, we call this quantity right here, this is our 2D divergence. I can't remember, have we talked about divergence yet? Or not much? I think we've talked about it. 
we talked about it in like chapter 10. Oh yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. In chapter 10, we talked about divergence and talking meaning of the divergence of a, uh, of a series or something going to infinity. In this case, a uh, divergence or div is something different. This is a, a vector field concept. And so I've got a picture coming up of that. Uh, but thank you for that reminder, Joseph. This is a different div. So let's see if we can understand the interpretation. So the interpretation, two line integrals, with the two line integrals on the left side, right here, give the outward flux of the vector field across C. The double integral on the right side involves the quantity partial F with respect to X plus partial G with respect to Y, which is the property of the vector field that produces flux across C. This factor is called the two-dimensional divergence. That is the net flux across the boundary is equal to the total divergence across the enclosed region. Okay, so let, I've got an animation version, but let's see if we can um, figure out what's going on here. So if you calculate the flux, what you're doing is you're traveling around the curve and you're asking how much of the field is perpendicular to, uh, how much of the field is perpendicular to the curve? You can also so, point inward, right? Go ahead. You can also point inward. All your you can also point inward. So this would be negative flux, negative flux pointing inward, positive flux going outward. Thank you, Enrique. That's correct. Uh, and so when we have that f dot n, what we're looking at is the the perpendicular component of the field. Okay. So the line integral is going to capture um, the total flux. So then on the inside, what we're going to do is we're going to at we're going to at each point within the field, we're going to ask, is stuff going out of that point? Or is stuff going into that point. Okay. So do we have positive divergence? Do if so, how how positive is the divergence? Is it negative? How negative? And we could add up the divergence at each of these points on the inside. And that net divergence would be the same as the flux that we calculate if we went around around the red boundary. Let's look at this in the Mathematica animation. Oh, nice. Let's see. So the way this works is you can see that uh, that here, notice the curve is going outward. It's so like the flux is going, or sorry, the divergence is outward at this point. There's like more stuff going out than coming into the point, if you will. Here, the divergence is inward. More stuff is going into the point than coming out. A lot more stuff going in than coming out. And you might say, how do you know? Like, how could you see that? And I think what you might be able to see is, look at how long this vector is going in on the right versus the ones coming out on the other side. So it's like there's more stuff going in than coming out, hence you're gonna have negative divergence. And so what we can do is we can draw that region. So here's our C, and we could find our flux, and our flux would be the line integral of F dot N, so that'd be the normal component of the field as long around the boundary. So that's that's if we this is if we just look you know at what's happening at each point. And you might even we might even look at it and say, hey, it looks like the arrows are pointing in here. So it's probably going to have a little bit of negative bit here. It looks like it's going to be a little bit negative here, a little bit negative there, very little negative here. On the other hand, be a little you know, positive over in these regions, just kind of guessing. 
Okay, so that would be if we're calculating the flux directly. Indirectly, we could look at all the points inside the, the, the region. And we can say, well, at this point, we have slightly positive, um, we have slightly positive divergence. At this point, we've got, notice how slow it's working. We have positive divergence, but it's very small. Looks like we have negative divergence here. Negative divergence there, et cetera, et cetera. And so we could look at all the points inside the region. And that's what the double integral does. So our double integral across the region R of partial of F, oh my gosh, with respect to X. Yes. So this thing right here is telling us what's the divergence at the points. And so it's saying, because we have the double integral, it's saying find the net divergence at all those points inside, and that will equal the flux from flux along the outside edge. Questions about that? Quick question. Mm -hmm. So negative divergence is flux out of the shape, right? Uh, negative divergence would be like, would eventually translate to flux going in. That answer your question? Yep. Wait, so is flux positive or negative? Uh, so positive flux is uh, flux going greater than zero would mean it's going, it's going from your region, it's going out. Like the net, the total would be going out of the region. Answered. Cool, cool. Other questions? So when we solve these integrals, are we always trying to find the divergence? Uh, we're not trying to find the divergence. We're using the divergence to find the flux. Okay. Yeah. So because the divergence is just, divergence is this little bit right here. Not the so it's the double integral of the divergence, and this is just the two D divergence. Other questions? Very good. All right. So let's do an example. Um, and I think what you'll see is that the example here is very similar to the previous example we did. It, it's, it's pretty straightforward stuff. So let's do it by hand. All right, so I want to evaluate the line integral around C of 2x minus 3y. Notice this is dy minus 3x plus 4x dx counterclockwise uh, around the unit circle. And so one thing that you can notice um, right off the bat is that we have it, it's sort of, there's a hint given right off the bat that you have the dy's and then the dx's, and also you have a subtraction. Um, so this would be the same thing as saying the, 
that 2x minus 3y is your little f, the 3x plus 4y is your g, and so this would be finding the flux equal to the line integral on the closed path of f dy minus g dx. So this is our flux formula. Good news. Uh, before today, we would have had to parameterize the unit circle, which isn't hard, but it's also a little bit of a nuisance. So now, rather than parameterizing, we can simply use Green's theorem. And so we say this is equal to the double integral across the unit circle of the divergence, which would be partial of f with respect to x plus partial of g with respect to y, dA. Partial of f with respect to x is two, two happy two. Oops. Um, partial of g with respect to uh, y is four. So this would be the double integral of six across the unit circle. So this is just the area of the unit circle times six area of the unit circle is pi, so this is just 6 pi. There's our flux. Remember the flux. This would be the total normal component of the field across or around that unit circle. Questions we're, still on seven, we're still on 17.4, right? Yeah. OK. Oh, I said this is example four, but there was no example three. So in case you're curious. Other questions about this? It's always a little bit scary to go off my notes, but I was kind of curious whether we would get the same thing if we tried to use the circulation form of the integral. So are you guys, Okay, doing a little bit of off-roading and see how it all works out. Okay. There was a little bit of fear and trepidation in that response. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Okay. So notice we could write this. Let's try it again. So our flux, in this case, would be the same thing as writing negative 3x plus 4y, 4y dx plus 2x minus 3y dy. And I just sort of put this, stuck the minus sign in with that term. And so this whole term would now be like a negative 3x minus a 4y and so this would this would now be our our f this would be our g okay and so this would be the same as the line integral around um, of f dx plus g dy uh, let me pause for a second. Do you see that the F's and the G's are different? The F's and the G's are different in the two lines. Like here, G is talking about the 3x plus 4y. Here, F is talking about minus 3x minus 4y. So they're sort of switched around a little bit. Does that make sense? In this format up here, we're talking about flux, but down below, we're talking about what? Circulation. Circulation, yeah, exactly. So, 
So good news, uh, when you want to calculate work, you have the choice of parametrizing and all that jazz, or you can just use Green's theorem. And so this would be equal to the double integral across our same unit circle. But now we need partial of f with, with of g with respect to x. Okay. Keep my stuff straight here. Partial of g with respect to x minus the partial of f with respect to y dA. Here's our g. What's our partial derivative of g with respect to x? Two. Two. Minus partial derivative of f with respect to y. Negative four. Negative four. And this should be pretty clear that we're going to get 6 pi this way as well. So it's, we're not saying that flux is equal to work. That's not, that's not how you want to read this. What, um, what you want to read it is saying that the uh, that you can think about the flux on one field as representing the work on another field um, or vice versa. So back up here, we were calculating flux around this field FG. Down below, we were calculating the work, but it's now on a different field. So the numbers are the same, kind of the interpretations are, are different. Can you hear me clearly? I'm getting warnings. Yeah. Um, question. Um, so is there a way that we could like um, make these definite integrals and like solve them normally, I guess? Sure. You have the choice of parametrizing and just treating it like a normal line integral. Oh, okay. But the way that we're doing it, we couldn't have. Okay. okay. Let me see if I can pull that that up in my notes. So I'm going back to there. There was a flow chart at the very end of seventeen point three, and. We're kind of at the beginning of the flow chart. Come on, let's see. Okay, so we are we are looking at uh, work and flux, or we're working at work and line integrals. So if we're here in the the line integral world, we have the we have to answer the question: Is it a closed curve? So if it's a closed curve yes, then we have the option. So since it's a, a closed curve, we, we have the option of using Green's theorem. Okay. Um, but we could also use, um, we always have this option. Always. this choice. The idea is that if it's closed, you can use Green's theorem. You could also parametrize and do it directly. But if it was not closed, if on the other hand, we got to this question, is it closed? And the answer was no and it happened to be not conservative, conservative, no, then this would be our only choice. Uh, phrase, let me see if I can phrase it another way. 
that um, if Green's theorem works, it's ironic that I have Green's theorem circled in red, but the other one in green. If Green's theorem works, theorem that applies, uh, applies, then you can also do, that implies you could also parameterize. But if parameterization applies, you can't necessarily do any of these other techniques. Did that answer your question, Melissa? Uh, yeah, kind of. All right. So uh, going back to what the phrase that you used down here, this is where you turn it into a definite integral. So when you're using Green's theorem, you basically just have to know the area of whatever the thing is that you're doing it over? Oh, you could also set it up as a definite integral like we did in calc or earlier on in this class. So oh, okay. we just we, we just didn't need to. And so uh, most of the cases will be pretty straightforward. Oh, OK. That's what I was wondering. Thank you. Other questions? Very good. All right, let's go back to our notes. All right, so one reason for introducing two forms of Green's theorem, that is the circulation and the flux forms, is that it's going to simplify our later work when we start talking about Stokes theorem and the divergence theorem. And so to complete this, we need to go backward and connect this idea of divergence and flux to something we talked about right at the beginning of the chapter, namely this idea of a stream function. So the stream function is used in fluid dynamics, which is a branch of engineering, where it's used to model flows that are incompressible, uh, things like hydraulics. So let's look at the parallels. So when we were in the the circulation workplace, we have this idea of curl, and we've made a connection using Green's theorem to circulation and work, and it's also connected to this idea of a conservative, uh, <laughs> um, a conservative field, um, and if you have a conservative field, then you could, might be looking for a potential function. So, nice puns, by the way. Uh, on the other hand, this idea of divergence or curl is somewhat parallels the idea of divergence. Work somewhat parallels the idea of flux. A conservative vector field um, parallels the idea of a source-free um, vector field. That would be one where the divergence is zero. And instead of having a potential function, now you'll have a stream a stream function. Processes for finding them are all the same. You'll end up with some homework questions, but uh, you'll remember that if we wanted to, to find the potential function, we simply did that whole anti-differentiation uh, differentiation bit where, where we started with F and then we integrated and then we differentiated and then we integrated a second time and eventually we found the potential function phi. Same thing is ha gonna happen here to find uh, the stream function. This is, um, this is psi, as in, oh, it's Friday, psi. Um, so, so to find the psi, you'll start with f, um, You'll integrate, then you'll differentiate again, then you'll integrate again, and at the end of the day, you'll find psi. Dusty. Yep. Um, can you tell me one more time what psi is? What is psi? Psi is the name of the stream function. Stream function, thank you. Yeah, stream function. And, okay, thank you. Yep. 
So it just directly parallels the idea of a potential function. So um, for those of you that are taking, uh, taking physics slash, um, slash engineering, you'll, you'll probably play with these things should you take a class on something like a field dynamics. Um, and yes, Jason, uh, I feel for you, just because it's a holiday weekend and there's no school doesn't mean that there's no work. So uh, yeah, hang in there, you can do it. Let's look at one more animation here. Well, I actually I don't think I have the animation. I think I just have the picture. So you'll, you'll notice that, oh my gosh, I gotta figure out what's what here. Um, that we have these level curves So these would be level curves. Um, and in this particular case, um, the level curves are um, generated from, with the, this is for the potential function, and they are with respect to, um, uh, we have a gradient field, so all these little vectors, notice, are perpendicular to the level curves. And we've talked about that in the past. So we've got our level curves are perpendicular to our gradient. The stream function, uh, maybe I'll stick with my same color. My stream function phi gives me all these streamlines. And the streamlines are going to be perpendicular to the level curves. And they just, it's just going to follow the, the vector field. And so think about following the arrows. So I'm just following the arrows, that's gonna give me my streamlines. Um, if you like the idea of like taking an inner tube on a river, you can imagine you put your inner tube in the river and we ask, where do you float to? Oh, it looks like you're gonna float this direction. These would be your streamlines following that stream function. look back at a previous field. I think I've got other ones. So in this case, if we followed, our, if we created our streamlines for with our stream function, you could imagine that those streamlines are going to do something like this. Here, it looks like they're going to come through and curve up. Something along those lines. These are all the streamlines for the stream function. Stream lines. Streamlines of psi. Questions about that? Very good. All right, let's see. So we've got to wrap up. So there's, the, there's a table here on page seven and I actually made a separate video about, about this, but the table is trying to help you make the connections between the two, the two ideas. So here you have a conservative fields. Okay, so these are one, conservative field is one where you have a potential function. And then we also have on the other side, what we're gonna call a source-free field. A source-free field is one where you have a stream function. Um, and also I wanna point out that you have a potential function is going to happen when the curl is zero. And the stream function is going to happen when the divergence is zero. So, uh, so if you have zero divergence, you have a stream function and you have a source free field. 
if you have a potential function, that means your curl was zero and you had a conservative field. And so talks about the circulation, talks about the flux. And notice if you have a conservative field or a source-free field, in either case, you can use your fundamental theorem of line integrals and simply evaluate the work by, in this case, evaluating phi at the two endpoints if it's conservative or if it's, um, if it's not conservative but it's source free, we would evaluate psi at the two endpoints. Questions about that? Sorry, what does the writing on the left say? Fundamental, fundamental theorem of line integrals. Oh, okay, thank you. Other questions? Very good. And so with Green's theorem in the picture, we can also extend this to, uh, to talk about closed curves. Um, so we can say, th this is what, what's following here. This is like the flow chart, but in table form. So it says, if it's closed and conservative, then the work is zero. If it's closed, but not conservative, you can use Green's theorem. If it's not closed and conservative, you can use the fundamental theorem of line integrals. If it's not closed and not conservative, then you're stuck with parameterization. So this table right here is just the flow chart in table form. So it's kind of like pick, your, pick which representation works best for you. Um, and then the bottom table talks about the same thing, but now doing it for source um, yeah, in terms of the normal component instead of the tangential component, i.e. flux instead of work. The, the very last page of the notes is a proof of Green's theorem. And I've already posted a short video kind of walking through this proof. And so I would encourage or invite you to take a look at the proof of Green's theorem. It's pretty, pretty interesting, pretty doable. Um, but in terms of covering it in our normal class time, it's going to go the way of the world because of, of my interviews that shortened our classes earlier this week. So the main point, so what's the main point of the whole, the whole chapter? The main point of the whole chapter of the whole section is simply that we can calculate our work or circulation by either calculating a line integral around a boundary or calculating a double integral of either the curl or the div, depending upon what you are, are working with. So in actual doing, it's not too tough. So Thanks everyone for a good week. Feel free to hang on the line if you're interested in continu continuing the COVID conversation. Um, but regardless, may all of you have a wonderful three-day holiday weekend, working or not working, and may we return together again uh, in peace to greener pastures or Green's Theorem pastures on Tuesday next week for our presentations. Take care everyone.